Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Time Save Podcast, a high-level discussion on high-level speedrunning. My name is Jacob Ghostwood Wilkinson, and joining me today is the Michael Jordan of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Shift, how are you doing? Hey, just uh, spent a lot of time working on the history video that we got to talk about as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. Yep, I'm here now. Perfect. Um, how is life on lockdown for you so far? Pretty much the same. <laughs> You know, a lot of soup instead of eating out, you know? Yeah, I feel that. All the, only change. all the speedrunners I've talked to are like, I mean, I never go outside anyway, so it's pretty much exactly what it normally is. Too too busy. Too <laughs> much to do before the remake comes out. Yeah, I bet. Um, so I always say that I think it's kind of funny if people have heard of this show, but not the speedrunners I have on. But just in case there is someone who doesn't know about you or Battle for Bikini Bottom, do you just kind of want to give an introduction to what makes the game unique and how you got into it? Well, I got into this game because of one glitch in particular that I was just uh, writing the, the original story about how it was found uh, mm -hmm. called cruise boosting. Mm -hmm. It's like the main speed tech in the game, but there are a lot of other things that go into it. It's just more of like the backbone that kind of holds the whole run together. Uh -huh. uh, a lot of the tech in the game is is unique where you can you can boost your speed in a variety of ways. Uh, there's a lot of damage boosting. Mm -hmm. You combine all that kind of stuff together to um, to clip through things. Pretty much any object in the game can be clipped into. You can also levitate. There are a lot of other unique things I guess we can get into later if they mm -hmm. come up. Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a 3D platformer, but it's its own take on the genre. It was released in 2003 for the sixth generation of consoles, and it's gotten quite the following over the past um, four or so years. Um, mm -hmm. It's existed for a lot longer than that as a speedrun, but as of recently, it started to get like very popular. One of the most uh, popular games on speedrun.com currently at uh, i think i think we're at like over 70 active runners right now wow. so it's, it's quite quite a bit up there yeah yeah that's crazy um so you said in the past 4 years or so that's kind of when it's taken off is that about when you joined because i know there was like a cuz i believe i heard you say on stream one time that you had seen a task for the game that you thought was interesting um was it yeah. was it sort of around when you joined and your stream numbers started picking up that other people were kind of drawn to the game or it, the game was um it was more of a small community mm. of few brilliant people who helped to get to the point where it was interesting enough for me to pick it up okay but once i picked it up and uh, some people who had interest of, in learning the game they could get into it because i started making tutorials and guides on how to play and i was streaming it a lot so it was very accessible for people to learn mm -hmm. and watch and, and get exposed to so with that with the game growing my stream also grew as well and with my stream growing the game also grew so we kind of grew together Mm -hmm. eventually uh, my videos started getting recommended on youtube to, like with the youtube algorithm uh, i got the run in i started i got partnered as well on twitch mm -hmm. from playing a game just ex exclusively that game um, really impressive. started getting on the front page of twitch as well you know from there it just kind of ramped up where more people were taking interest in the game more people were taking interest in doing the run stride hunting uh, people became smarter at looking for stuff. We got m smarter people in the community to find more interesting things. Mm -hmm. And since then, the time has cut down. I believe um, my first world record was a 107, and now it's a 48. Wow. I'm talking about 80%. And would you say that some of that growth... Uh, that's a whole, that's whole other story, you know? Yeah. Would you say that some of that growth comes from, uh, like, the people you've drawn in? Like, have you learned from some of the people that, like, learned the game from you? Like, oh, hey, I found this thing. Of course, yeah. We've yeah. All, we all learn from one another, of course, mm -hmm. yeah. We... So forth. Back in the day, it was mostly me doing a lot of this stuff because I was spending the most time playing the game. But people caught up with the, the knowledge curve and started finding things on their own. Um, around, like, a few years ago, people started that kind of stuff. Cool. But at the beginning, um, twenty. At the beginning for me, like the game was experiencing another revival. Its first revival was in 2013, 2014 ish when uh, Cole and Hazel both started running the game. Mm -hmm. Like late, very early 2012 ish, they started taking interest. But they started doing runs like mid 2012, 2013, 2014. Mm -hmm. um, they were the ones who discovered cruise boosting and some of the more like the, the bigger glitches in the game. But there were still plenty of big glitches and, and tricks and exploits to be found that we, we found when we came back to it. But the issue is um, this game was getting a lot of traction back in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. uh, with Cole and Hazel averaging like 20 to 30 viewers on Twitch streaming the game speedruns. But it just kind of died off around 2015-ish because um, they stopped playing and 
the game was so difficult to get into because the speed tech was so like unique and strange that right. um, people couldn't figure out how to play it. Very mm-hmm. few people did. And um, I was one of the people who picked it up again after people hadn't been playing it for a while. It was myself. Um, Faf, he's, um, he's known now for like a hat in time and like getting over it and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But he started his speedrunning career playing this game as like his first speed game, and as far as I understand, mm-hmm. and it took him like a month to learn because it just took so long to figure out how to do everything back then. Right. So there were such complex tricks, but there wasn't enough adequate mm-hmm. explanation on how to do them. So that was kind of what 2016 was about: was bringing the game back to life mm-hmm. and teaching people how to play it. So now that this is all documented, like what you mentioned earlier, the uh, the the tutorial video that I just recently put out, like mm. that was like that's like the um the ultimate guide. But back in the day, it was just like forum post, capture card, microphone, yeah. explain the run as you're doing it. Mm. That was still better than what we had at the time. So people took that and they started playing, and mm. from there it just grew. Good deal. I want to say one of my like favorite moments I've ever seen from a speedrunning community was watching you do like the four person uh one tiki setup streams. That was like something that I had never seen from any other community it's just like just four runners just sitting around like banging out attempts trying to figure out this trick together i think that's one of the like really cool things that makes the community unique because i'll admit when i first found your stream i thought that it was just kind of like oh here's just like this guy running a game that he is interested in that doesn't really have a community around it but i've just kind of been impressed about how wrong that is over and over again so yeah i think the misconception comes from the not many partnered streamers playing the game mm-hmm. which at this point I don't really understand because now is the time to play the game because the remake's coming out and you, right. you want to slice that pie. You want to you better play the game, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's obviously not what speedrunning is about, but from a, from a streamer perspective, like, it's not a bad gig right now, mm-hmm. you know? The game's popular. It's fun to watch. It's got a good community, and it's getting a remake, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, some people are getting into it. I know um, Liquid Wi-Fi is mm-hmm. a streamer of The Simpsons Hit and Run. He's running the game again. He started in, like, 2018, but... Back then, some weird stuff was going on with rule sets, and we were trying to figure out how to deal with SBA, which this, the ski ball trick you just mentioned mm. um, was first being found at that time. And the 70-hour work week you were talking about when we all got in the right. call and tried to figure out the most recent setup. Um, mm. It's funny how little that got us. Like we We really tried just about everything, but mm. it's just so optimized that there's not much else to do with it, you know? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, it's, it's tough, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, uh, to to go back to my previous point, we're seeing more streamers and like even like world record holders from other popular games mm-hmm. take interest in it. not just like watching it but also playing it. Mm-hmm. We tried to um help uh, Tyrone, the world record holder in Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, yeah. We yeah, we sent him an Xbox because it's so difficult to get your hands on one mm-hmm. um, like an NTSC Xbox in Italy. But the thing kind of like the postal services kind of beat around the bush for two months it got stuck in the post office and then the whole coronavirus outbreak happened and they shipped it back to the u.s so we can't even play the game Bummer. so we don't even know when he's going to be able to, to start doing runs eventually but we hope to eventually get that xbox <laughs> to him so he can play that's, that's another thing too is like this game has gotten so popular i mean it's, it's multi-platform but xbox is really the only viable one for competition mm-hmm. depends if you're like doing like high if you're high level like xbox 360 is fine but it loses a minute to loading screen. So, you know, like, Xbox Original is the top level console that we cut the top level players to use. But despite it being such an obscure console, the game has still gotten so popular because mm. a lot of people just like they're fine with learning on the slower console to get into it and then upgrade later. That's one of the other things I think makes this community unique is that people are focused on enjoying the game more than um, the competition. And it's still popular and therefore competitive because people are playing it yeah, a lot. Sense despite not being so focused on just getting a world record. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Um, I want to talk about your like role as the community leader uh, for Battle for Bikini Bottom, because um, even though I, I've talked to world record holders for other games, but they're like games that just have been, you know, like these are the rules since like the 90s. So it, it was kind of hard for them to come in and take over on that. But I know since in the last year or so, you guys have cleaned up your leaderboard a little bit and started putting out like a, uh, conceded effort, a uh, concerted effort. I mean, sorry, on uh, getting more content to bring in new runners. Do you want to talk a little bit about what your job looks like doing that sort of thing? Yeah, it's um. So there are ten people who make the rules. I'm just one of those ten people, and we mm-hmm. discuss 
like the possibility of changing things around to make it more accessible for new runners. A lot of speed runs have like weird obscure categories in their main boards and they're like in prominence, which I think is, I mean, in my philosophy, it just makes things a little bit more convoluted. Mm -hmm. If your any percent category is um, accessible for new runners, your your main competitive category, while well, it might not have as many runners, but it's more popular with the popular player, excuse me, the experienced players, mm -hmm. it's more popular with them. Like that's fine for the competitive category. You need options that are, you know, justifiable and understandable for people to get into as well as like side categories. Um, mm. We have a, an extension board for Battle for Kingdom Bottom. It's a lot of, a lot, it's a lot of bigger games do have extension boards mm. um, where we have the, the more like fun, obscure side categories that wouldn't be obvious to people who are new to the game. Like for example, um, no, any percent, no SBA. Like right. if you're new and you don't even know what SBA is, you wouldn't understand why someone would want to run the game without it. But it's just a, it's a side category of people who want to go back to the way the game was played in the past. Mm. There's like any percent warpless, which is like just any percent without warping, not using the warp menu, because menu warping is a pretty big exploit in Battle for Bikini Bottom. So mm -hmm. it's like a fun little side category that some people have taken interest in. We have our side categories, but they're shoved off to the side to make room for the three main ones, which are 100%, any percent, and NG plus. Our variation on NG plus, like um, a lot of communities do this where speed run NG plus is not an official mode, but mm -hmm. They define their own rules for what the game is like if you start with things that you weren't able to in the previous playthrough. In Battle for Bikini Bottom, we use cheat codes to activate the Cruise Bubble and Bubble Bowl, which are the moves that you unlock for defeating two of the major boss fights mm -hmm. earlier in the game. So you can start with the Cruise Boosting exploit I was talking about earlier for boosting your speed and making the movement a lot faster pace. So it's like an any percent option for people who like to start with that exploit. And any percent any percent. 100% is just collecting everything in the game, which in my opinion is the um, the best showcase of what the game has to offer. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not for everybody. So yeah. that's why we have three different categories that people choose from. They're not split by console. They're not split by variable mm -hmm. or anything like that. They're just, just simply put three separate categories and you choose whichever one you want to play. And it makes it a lot easier for content creation on the website because we can focus on putting out guides and, and you know, like... Uh, establishing uh, resources for getting into the game with just those three categories mm -hmm. makes it easier for people to understand like what next once they get sick of any percent or you know what should i do now once they get sick of the three categories that are on the boards maybe they can go to extensions maybe they can go to bingo mm -hmm. randomizer speed runs of like mods that are also becoming a lot more popular now mm -hmm. people are making uh, modded versions of the game to, to speed run and play so cool there are a lot of options but we make sure that the most important ones are at the forefront so people don't get confused yeah i was uh really one of the most like impressive moderation decisions i've seen a board do in a while was when i noticed that you guys had moved uh no sba and story missions over to the category extensions because uh, is it story missions is that story spatulas it's, I can't... see that's where it gets confusing and part yeah. of the reason why we moved it mm -hmm. all level spatulas was the name of it and it's basically every mission based spatula mm -hmm. excluding the trades for patrick and crab so like there are like extra spatulas you can get where um, you, you can go there, there are 80 socks to collect throughout the game mm -hmm. and you can trade 10 socks for one golden spatula. So there are eight total spatulas you can get from Patrick and then you can get another eight from buying them from Mr. Krabs. So that's like the, the shiny objects cost mm -hmm. 39,500 shiny objects to buy all them from Krabs. So back in the day before ski ball abuse, which is the trick that you, that um, you exploit the X ball, the, excuse me, the ski ball machine to, um, to generate shiny objects at a really fast rate. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, we were generating around like 59.5 per second with a, a an exploit where we would just um, destroy a bunch of tiki's, which give shiny objects, and combo them, which gives extra shiny objects, and mm -hmm. jump off a bridge, die, respawn, and do it again. We do that for 11 and a half minutes straight and 100 percent to get enough shiny objects. But Not very now fun. we're generating <laughs> shiny objects up to 900 per second. Right. So it became so fast that it became viable in the any percent category where we can use eight of the crab spatulas and replace um, seven of the ones that weren't being previously used. You can replace, you can use those to replace other content spatulas like mission spatulas. So mm. the reason why all level spatulas was a thing was because 100% was so unplayable back in the day or so unappealing, not unplayable, but un unappealing right. to a lot of people because of the grinding. So it was an, it was an option to like diet 100% where you can do that. We also had another variation of 100% with 100% with in-game codes, 
where you would 100% the game, but you're allowed to use in-game codes to get everything in the game. So you can activate cruise boosting early. You can um, you can generate the shiny objects by using cheat codes and generate spatulas to enter levels early. So it was it was a spin on one, excuse me. Okay. It was a spin on 100% that mm-hmm. made it much more appealing to people without having to spend back then it was like 18 minutes of grinding. Yeah. But now because 100% was fixed by the existence of SBA, those categories became a lot less popular. Mm. And so they kind of died off and there was no reason to have them on the main board. So we just moved them off. They're on the extension board for legacy, but they're just not really relevant anymore. Right. Yeah. Which again, it was kind of what I found impressive about it because I remember when I first noticed that no SBA was still there. I've never necessarily been a fan of speed or any categories that are just like, Oh, I just don't like this new trick, except for when the yeah. new trick is like, you know, arbitrary. Code when it was found, we, we did it to help transition people into the idea of the trick existing. Mm-hmm. And we didn't, it was also uncertainty. There was a lot of anxiety at the time the trick was going to kill the game because we didn't know that 100% was going to become what it is now. And we didn't know that any percent would take a backseat to 100% for competitive players mm-hmm. and also become more accessible through SBA because SBA made it less appealing. Excuse me. Any percent made, excuse me, <laughs> again. <You're okay. laughs> no, SBA made any percent less appealing to top level players, but it made it more appealing to people who were getting into the game because it was easier to get into, but the skill ceiling was lower. So top players gravitated to no SBA, and mm-hmm. now they gravitate to 100% and NG. But like when, NG, obviously, is a made up category. So like, can't be the main leaderboard category. Mm. 100% kind of helped save the game because it gave a non-arbitrary option for players to sink their time into. Mm -hmm. Because eventually it comes to the question, like, why am I playing the game without SBA? Because it's slower. It's just not speed running because it's not the fastest way to beat the game. There's no question about it with 100% because it's it's a viable speed run category. It makes sense why we're playing it. Mm -hmm. The objective is clear regardless of what we do to get from point A to point B. Right. But now it's fun as well. Mm Mm-hmm. It kind of just helped um, get the community back on track and have a goal in mind of something to optimize. Mm-hmm. And it's also way more content to optimize, way more difficult as well of a speed run. Mm-hmm. Um, it's even more difficult than no SBA was, was back in the day when it was a one frame gauntlet because um, there's just so there's so many more diverse tricks and they're all way more precise than the stuff we were doing back then anyway. Mm-hmm. So we kind of everybody kind of just won off of the exchange where we have a category now any percent that people can get into very easily. Uh, you're seeing that with the active runner count, people are now playing the game a lot more, mm. and people are getting back into the game because they they enjoy this route more as a, as a beginner. Because again, like speed running is is full of a lot of people who aren't taking games as seriously as the top players, and they should have an option too. They shouldn't have to be forced to do like really slow workarounds to avoid really hard strats. The top players were doing because that was basically the game back then. Right in 2018, it was like. Crazy hard strats at top level, but if you weren't at top level, you were doing really slow, boring stuff to work around it. Mm. So it was, it was much more of a watcher's game than a player's game, but now it's become both. That's cool. I think also, I mean, just in terms of like the speedrunning community as a whole, the games that have like collecting based objectives, like, uh, like collecting the spatulas in this game or collecting stars in Super Mario 64 or even Banjo Kazooie, which I'm pretty sure is only collecting, a lot of those games like have made 100% their, their main category anyway. So. Yeah, it's, it's it's. I also like that one. You make a very good point. Like these these platformers get optimized to the point where um, the objectives are very straightforward, and there are mm-hmm. often ways to kind of you know skip them or bypass them to get to the end quickly. Like Super Mario sixty four has that problem where you can beat the game with literally zero stars. Right. Um, Battle for Bikini Bottom kind of has that issue at a top level at least, where the game is so gutted that there's not much left to do mm-hmm. except run in a straight line and that's the next objective. And abuse the ski ball machine to buy eight spatulas. Mm-hmm. Um, Banjo Kazooie's case, I, I believe, I'm not an expert on that game, but I believe the reason why that 100% is the main category is because any percent is just so close. Maybe, but like it's so close, yeah, right? It's so like 84% point, or something. <laughs> yeah, you might as well just get the rest of it. <laughs> right. And, um, Battle for Bikini Bottom is in that same boat now mm. where you collect 77 spatulas and 80%. And in 100%, it's 100, which I really love, by the way, because it, the viewers understand, like, it's very easy to see, like, one spatula is 1%. So mm-hmm. every time the number pops up on the screen, you're like, okay, I'm this percentage of the way through the run. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier to understand where you are. 
if you don't understand how splits work, mm-hmm. which make it very accessible to watch. Um, but with 100%'s previous issue is uh, you collect 77 spatulas and old 90%, you collect the 77 spatulas and like just barely 77 were, were good to collect. Mm-hmm. Since the game is so much more developed, all the spatulas are fun to collect now, mm-hmm. or at least like 98, 97% of them. So now, um, instead of the um, the crab spatulas not making up that 8%, Eight percent of those crab spatulas are now included in any percent, so now we're really effectively collecting under seventy spatulas of real content. Right. So you just get so much more out of it with one hundred percent because, you know, like I said previously, um, the 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 idea was that with seventy seven spatulas and any percent plus the seven that you would you wouldn't get from mm. crabs, um, that's not much of a difference between any percent and one hundred percent content wise, but one hundred percent was so much longer because of the extra grinding. But now with no extra grinding and having a little bit more content it makes the game it, it adds stuff back to the game that was previously cut because it was no longer fast than eight percent. But it still keeps you know you, you understand what I'm trying yeah, to say. No, definitely I gotcha. Cool. Okay. Well let's talk a little bit about your uh, effort to create content yourself um for the game. I know that you just finished pretty big project for your any percent tutorial video um do you just talk to me a little bit about because i've tried to make a tutorial video for the game i ran and i just like get so lost in the process so do you want to talk a little bit about like what that process looked like for you like the different steps you went through yeah i believe the process of making a fully realized tutorial video like with um like cutaway gags and stuff like that Mm -hmm. Keep it fun for people who don't plan on running the game because I'm still a YouTube, like I still have a YouTube channel. You know, I wouldn't consider myself a YouTuber yet, but I still have a channel I want to keep afloat. I don't want people to get bored by the content I'm uploading. Yeah, definitely. In the past, the tutorials that I would upload were just like live cuts of me just explaining stuff through the run. Mm-hmm. Not not a lot of people are going to be interested in that, especially because they're I'm not going. I'm not doing a review of the world record run right. or more high level strats. Just like less updated, not less updated, but easier less optimized stuff yeah, that people sense. from a viewership perspective might not be as interested in watching but this challenge with this one was trying to make something that was fun to watch and learn from both and i, I added some little like comic relief mm-hmm. sections in there to make it fun uh, just like little short stuff because it was still a mostly serious video but if one percent of it's funny you know people will stick around for the next little bit that comes up because they don't know when it's coming and so forth yeah i gotcha but I believe the original process of this started back all the way back in 2016 when I made my first tutorial. Um, I said when I was learning the game and trying to get better at it that I wouldn't. And by the way, at the time, the world record was a 107. Mm. Um, just for context, um, I said I wasn't going to make a video on how to speed run the game. I wasn't going to make a tutorial until I had a sub 110 because I figured at that point I'd be good enough at the game to be able to ex- at least be able to explain to people how the game worked. Mm-hmm. But funny enough, at the time, because there were no resources to learn the game, on your own, I was so bad at cruise boosting, I didn't understand how to do it, and that was like one, the main, like back then it was like the majority of the game. Right. Um, cruise boosting, my, my screen went black there, hold on. All right. Um, the majority of the game was cruise boosting, so if you didn't know how to do that, you just struggle so much getting into it. So the first tutorial I made, I still got a 109 because the game wasn't optimized, but I just I was so bad at cruise boosting, I could not do it. Mm. I didn't figure out until like I had like a 108, how to really do it if, like consistently and effectively mm-hmm. and once i figure out how to do it i just shot straight down and got the world record and so forth like mm-hmm. optimized again to the point where it was like almost pushing under an hour but that first tutorial i wasn't there yet in skills so it wasn't that great for learning people still like a lot of people still picked up the game but it wasn't until the year after when i made the next one after that that a lot of more people started to pick it up mm-hmm. and then 2017 really started to grow into like one of the more active speedrun games on speedrun.com. Since then, it's been consistently like up there, like mm-hmm. top 30 at least. Like it's never gone below that since 2017, mm-hmm. once that second tutorial was made. And then things just kept going, kept making them. Um, 2018, 2019 was a rough spot because there were so many developments with SBA that like the tutorials just kept being outdated. They kept getting outdated each time I make them. Yeah. So I decided to wait and not make a tutorial since like i think like around this time last year mm-hmm. and now you know the new one's out and the new one i the philosophy going into that was like okay 
the game's ha- the game hasn't really changed much, at least for any percent. The game's always changing for one hundred percent, but any percent's been optimized for almost a year now. Mm-hmm. The route's not changed much, especially for new players. Hasn't changed much. Um, now is the time to make something that's going to last for a long time. And so I sat down for two months, invested hundreds of hours into this new one, mm-hmm. and this is the definitive, the ultimate guide for running any percent. Hopefully, um, I don't think anything major is going to be found for a very long time that beginners will have use for so this especially and if it does get found like we had the website now that the community and myself we all worked on yeah to to make these little like patches like updates for the tutorial there's a whole section on there where you can look at the routes like how the routes differ um from level to level of skill starting with the any percent tutorial that i put out um one of our community members curtis was uh, nice enough to write out each individual route for each skill level that he made up Mm -hmm. and explain how to transition from the beginner route in my video to that next route to the next route after that to the next route after that and he was also integrating these um changes for the beginner route because again like i was keeping it under wraps because i didn't want it to leak i didn't want people to to get any parts of the video leak because i wanted to be surprised by the stuff that i put in there yeah so he was doing this as the video was streaming live for the first time the premiere that happened on the Mm -hmm. 14th so he was putting a lot of work into that. We appreciate his effort. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what all does that website entail? Is it? I, I understand that like content that's not necessarily purely educational is also like a goal of the site, if I'm not mistaken. What are kind of some of the different goals that you were trying to achieve with that project? Well, I'm on the website now just to get some talking points ready. The, the, yeah. the original goal was to get people a resource for getting better at the game because there wasn't much of that without having to like ask a player like, Hey, how do I do this? What mm-hmm. should I, what spatula should I trade for this? Cause the game's open world. It's mm-hmm. a very nonlinear game because the socks affect how many spatulas you finish with. Um, and they're all viable for runs, by the way, mm-hmm. unlike uh super Mario sunshine is an example of a game where like the blue coins exist to trade for shines, but they're not used in any percent in battle. The socks are used right. in all categories. So that's the reason why um, it's a lot more difficult for beginners to route stuff. Mm-hmm. So we went the route of like, okay, the spatula. And a- another thing too is like cruise boosting can only be done after you collect 41 spatulas to enter the industrial park. Or 40 spatulas and then the 41st is from defeating the boss. Mm-hmm. SBA can only be done after you collect 15 spatulas to get into the Poseidon. So there are three different sections of the game where you're not getting everything as quickly as you see it, but you're saving stuff for later because it's faster. You're doing things earlier because they're not much different later. Right. And you have three different sections to balance from you the socks, the different spatulas, different tricks. It's, it's, it's a mess. Yeah. So we decided to go the route of like, okay, instead of making people ask, like, what should I trade for this? We made several different routes on the, for each category on the website. So it's like, okay, you're, you're at this level. Now you upgrade to this level and change these exact spatulas and socks. Because mm-hmm. again, like it's, Part of, if you're deeper into the game and you're more enthusiastic about the routing aspect, yeah, it's fun to pick your own stuff and customize, but there should be a default route for each skill level that each person can just take if they don't want to go through the trouble of asking somebody what to do yeah. to learn how to route. Like, obviously, you're at an advantage if you know how to route, make a mm. custom route, but a custom route isn't, necess- isn't necessary to improve in the game. Yeah, and that's a that concept we had to really tackle with this website was mm-hmm. making the game improvable without having to go through a custom route. We do have like a list of, we have an encyclopedia of strategies now. Like mm-hmm. it's like over 170 pages of strats. A lot of those wow. strategy pages have like several strats on one page just because they're all grouped together. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of different <laughs> aspects of this game to understand at any different skill level. There are strategies I don't even know how to do in this game because like by the time I was already advanced enough to do the optimal strat, an easier strat was found that I just never learned. Right. Like stuff like that exists all, all over the place. I, mm-hmm. I couldn't even explain and do some of the lower level strats because I never had to bother learning them. Mm-hmm. So this is why it's nice to have people who research strats like high high level, top uh, high level, low level, um, or rather beginner level I should say, not low level. Mm-hmm. Um stuff because like most of my knowledge is stuff that I learned in the past that was easier because yeah. obviously the game yeah. just keeps getting harder. But those the stuff the stuff that I knew in the past that was easier is all obsolete now. Mm-hmm. So for a few things, so it's nice to have people who are knowledgeable about that stuff to help with the website. Yeah. So we have the encyclopedia to to customize your route if you want to, mm-hmm. or learn the strategies that are mentioned in the tutorial route, um, the um, routing tutorials that are on the uh, tutorial page. Mm-hmm. 
and then we have like a list of levels to kind of like help people group together like okay this tricks in this level that's more of like an extra thing it's not too necessary but we wanted to have the levels page on there for referencing and like uh, like modding uh like modding terminology like having mm -hmm. the different level names on there for the mod the modders to expand knowledge on because it's not meant for just um speed running it's meant for modding uh playing randomizer speed run bingo and tests we're trying to build a resource for all that but a lot of those aspects other than speed running are relatively underdeveloped except like excuse me um a lot of those sub communities under the battle for bikini bottom community are underdeveloped mm -hmm. compared to speed running but they all help speed running they all make the speed run more interesting when you have like different mods to play yeah speed run bingo um, which is super underdeveloped right now we have to do like a whole rule change work over on that mm -hmm. soon to make it more you know like um comparable to how other communities do it so it's e it's more accessible yeah um because when we first started doing bingo i'm going on a tangent now but no, like, when okay. we first I'm started curious. doing bingo it was um it wasn't really um i didn't know what i was doing when i set it up so mm. people have kind of just started going off on this like weird tangent of uh, playing bingo this weird way that doesn't really compare to how speedrun bingo is supposed to be played so mm. instead of like um keeping that just that one rule set is the one way to play. We're trying to add more rule sets that are more similar to how other communities do it, mm -hmm. make it more accessible to other communities. And that's just one example of how we're trying to um, help other com other sub communities under speed running and related to speed running, like modding and um, tasking, mm -hmm. which is still kind of a sub community under speed running. But as far as the interest goes, um, there's not too much crossover with the speed runners and the tasker, but there's there's a little bit. So we're trying to help those communities uh, grow to make the game overall better. So it's not just the speedrunning community. We're now trying to branch out and make other aspects of the Battle for the Keen Bottom community bigger and better. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, what What is the URL for that website for anybody who's interested in checking that out? Uh, BFBB.site. Uh, we use PHP on it, so the, like, the individual links are kind of like they're, they're, they're generated, so it's not like... Um, I think actually the tutorial page is actually, yeah, it's bfb.site slash speedrun underscore tutorials. I mean, it's all, it's, again, it's PHP, so it's like, right. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely. That sounds a lot more um, like inclusive than some of the other community sites I've seen. So that's really cool. I'm, I'm really excited about that project. Um, you also mentioned that you're working on a world record history video. I, I have to ask, is, is there like a natural challenge to you like helping with that project at because at some point it just becomes like the yeah, history of your why, that's why TVs. i have some editors on board and mm -hmm. some people to help write stuff um it's being told uh, it's being narrated by sm loader one of my friends who's around a lot of different speedrun communities mm -hmm. um, primarily i think he's involved with like uh, zelda stuff but he's also been around battle from king bottom quite a bit mm -hmm. So he's a um, really good voice actor. He's he was actually a finalist in the um, uh, in auditions for the new Smash Melee documentary. Oh, I think really? It's called like, Meta Game. I think it's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. He was a finalist for the narrator in that. Mm -hmm. So we we just kind of pulled him on board and said, "Hey, you want to read the script?" And he's also he was involved with the Average Trey's uh, history video for Super Mario Sunshine. He was like very involved with the music choice for that. Mm -hmm. So we got him on, on board for that too, and helping with um. He's gonna help review the script to make sure it's like sounds okay in his voice as well. Mm. We got him very involved. Um, another thing too with Loader, uh, reading it's also gonna to be told like from, um, I, it's it's my writing voice, so like mm. I'm kind of going through and writing the whole thing, and my friends like taking a look at stuff and saying yeah, maybe clarify that, change that a little bit. Um, what's gonna happen? I'm probably gonna have my friends in the community write about the era when I started coming in and playing to get it from their perspective. Cause it's not just like, I don't want, I, it's not only that I don't want it to be biased mm. talking about talking about myself in the third person, but I also want um, the perspective of people who weren't me. Cause obviously like the natural naturally with speed running, like it can always be better. You never think your runs good. Yeah. But I want to see the perspective of how other people viewed these runs that I did mm -hmm. when I come in. And by the way, when I when I say when I come in, I mean like I've gotten I'm 15 pages into the script, single space, and we just started talking about cruise boosting being found. Oh my goodness! Like, wow. Yeah, we're we're only on 2014 right now. We're I'm on March 2014 as of now. So that's like uh, Hazel just got back to me. She's kind of like our link to the past right now, where mm. she's telling me about stuff that happened back in the day. Like I, I'm I'm kind of like interviewing her through 
uh, Discord DMs, and she's telling me, helping me clarify stuff. We're trying to, like, sometimes there's, like, a little bit of a, like, a blank spot in history we're trying to figure out together mm -hmm. using different resources and different forums and stuff at the time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot easier once we get to 2016 because I, my memory is very good of um, the, the things that have happened since then because I've been, like I said, or, like, I, I didn't say this, actually, but I think most people know by now I've been playing this game every single day for the past four years. Yeah. So I pretty much have a, a very solid account of what's happened since then. Mm. But I also want the perspective from other people. There are a lot of like small down periods where um, I was the only one playing the game in 2016. And like there were like weeks at a time people would play and they'd stop for weeks at a time. Mm. And I'd be playing at weeks for a time and I'd stop for a weeks at a time. They'd stop for a weeks at a time. But I was playing consistently the whole time to bridge these gaps of people not playing. So the game never ended up dying. And then eventually in 2017, it started to gain traction where it's become a lot more self-sustaining. Now I think it absolutely is self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. um, it probably wouldn't be growing as much if I weren't streaming the game, but I think the community would still survive, exist, and you know, be able to do its own work if I weren't around. So that's comforting knowing that like, yeah, but, because yeah. the existence of these resources and the players who are passionate about the game, if, some, if I weren't able to play the game anymore, mm -hmm. it'd be okay now. And that's something that wasn't, I wasn't capable of saying until now. I don't, I don't think I haven't been really sure of it until now, mm -hmm. especially because um, the game already went through two deaths before. Like it, it died back in the uh, late 2000s and it died in the uh, early 2010s again. So, mm -hmm. or mid 2010s rather. So I'm, I'm glad that now we have some stability where I, I think I'm confident that the game will be fine now that we have enough resources and um, the established knowledge is out there. Mm -hmm. I think what will really tie it all together is this history video that set that kind of recounts everything that happened up until this point and give people an idea of like how the community has developed and know what to do next is kind of like a almost like a bible i guess of yeah like i got gotcha. how, how the um the game is supposed to be played so mm -hmm. there's no confusion when people pick it up again in the future if it ever gets if it ever dies down because mm. that i think a lot of communities have a lot of trouble with transitioning um, positions of power people have different ideas and they lose sight of how the game is supposed to be played mm. for better or worse you know yeah you just gave me this really funny mental image of a kid in like 2035 like blowing the dust off of like the website like okay it's time to bring this game yeah. back um so you guys are in a situation that not a lot of speedrunning communities go through where you're growing quickly a lot of people are becoming interested and like just looming like a few months from now a completely hd redone remake of the game is going to come out um, how has like rehydrated affected uh, kind of the way that the community has been, been going about these things? And I guess a better question is what do you expect to happen? Like once rehydrated comes out? Well, rehydrated has us all very anxious because THQ Nordic has been very quiet about stuff. And I haven't, I went to this, a lot of people know I went to the studio in mm -hmm. October to play the game and test stuff for them, give them some insight on like stuff, like small details they might've missed. So I was there for three days. Um, unfortunately, we, we were planning on doing a second trip mm -hmm. to like sometime this year, but I can guess why you're not doing not that now. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah, the Corona stuff. So. Right. Um, that's very unfortunate, but yeah. they opened an online testing service for Destroy All Humans, THQ Nordic did. So mm -hmm. there's a chance they could even do that remotely if we need to do anything, if they want me to look at the movement one more time. Mm -hmm. Because it's funny, that was the one thing we didn't get a chance to look at. We got a chance to look at the, the SpongeBob movement, the sliding movement, but we never got a chance to look at the platforming movement. Mm -hmm. and that's what a lot of people are saying is like, it needs to be polished a little bit because it doesn't really feel like the original based mm -hmm. on you know takes from people who were at the, um, um, not E3, uh, PAX East. Mm -hmm. When they got to play the game in person, they were saying that it didn't really feel much like the original. So I uh, hope they take that feedback and they use it to polish the movement a little bit more. But if, if they need any help with that, like judging how it feels, I'm very open to doing that remotely if mm -hmm. possible. But a lot of, that's a lot of the anxiety. But a lot, more anxiety is just like trying to get this community well documented and explain to people why the remake's even happening mm -hmm. because of the, the revival of this game. Like we're trying to make a history video on that. It's not just world record progression. It's also strat progression, community progression, and like how the game went from being a forgotten licensed game from the early 2000s to it. I guess people are kind of looking at now as like a, a forgotten gem. Mm -hmm. 
now it's um been fully reclaimed by people it's being remade you know right it's there's a, it's a whole story that we need to tell mm-hmm. and it's crazy because speed running made this happen and i don't think that's happened yeah, before where sp- like speed running has revived a game mm-hmm. to this extent you know it's it's very um it's very interesting because they could have just very well made a, a licensed game based on the new movie like they've done with every previous movie before that but right. this is the case where they're not taking the route of making a movie tie in this time they're choosing Battle for Bikini Bottom to sell with the movie because it's they they're aware of how popular it was and how much popular how much more popular it is now. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an interesting take. You know, it's yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a it's a bold move, but it's going to pay off for them because they 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 were smart and they saw how big the game is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, speaking of like speedrunning reviving the game, that's I think is what has made it so curious for me watching you talk about trying to convince them to bring cruise boosting in for the new game. Um, where it's kind of like an interesting, like the circular nature of speedrunning, where you have a trick that only ever exists because of like poor coding and, and to say like, okay, well we like this now and this is like part of the game now. So now you- I think that's only that's, I think that's like kind of like a skewed perspective on the situation. So I'll just explain. Okay. Yeah. No, go for it. I'm curious. How that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. cruise boosting is a side effect of 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 overlapping animations because okay. um heavy iron in house their animation system so it's the renderware engine but they have custom animations and they're very well done mm. very very well done but the side effect of something that pride took you know they didn't realize at first was that you can use moves on the same frame okay. was because the cruise bubble because the cruise bubble was implemented very um, haphazardly where you can use moves at the on the same frame when the cruise bubble is used. Mm. So weird. There are also other weird properties with the cruise bubble, but the cruise bubble itself is what causes this cancellation to happen. Mm. But bowling cancellation is also a whole other thing that's possible mm. through means of other than the cruise bubble. But the cruise bubble was the RTA viable way of doing it. Um, they they later figured out in the movie game when they made the movie game out of the um, the base of Battle for Bikini Bottom um, when they reskin Battle to make movie. They realized this, and they um they entered a line of code that fixed it. Gotcha. Simple fix. So more like very simple an, fix. an oversight. So it's a very it's a very well made stable game, but yeah, they just it. missed that one little thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So not necessarily like poor coding. Cru- fast forward to now, when cruise boosting is being talked about mm-hmm. and referenced by the developers of the game, when they first revealed it at Gamescom, um, and they mention. There is a lot of debate at the studio over whether or not to include it. Mm. Uh, they vaguely mentioned it. It turns out the CEO of Purple Lamp Studios making the game is a big fan of speedruns. And he saw the game in GDQ 2017 and took a lot of interest in, the, in that run in particular. Mm. And around that time, THQ Nordic was noticing a surge in popularity of the game for you know reasons we've already talked about. Right. And they decided to, they were probably already in the process of getting the license back from, from Nickelodeon. Mm. But the question was, which SpongeBob game were they going to remake? Or or were they going to make a new one, if that? Right. Yeah. And make a new one, of course, with the new movie coming out, which at the time it was destined to come out in 2019. But then the death of Steven Hillenberg and all that stuff, they probably rewrote the script a little bit yeah. to change it to fit their agenda for like, pushing the um, the spinoff they're doing now or whatever. Mm. So it got the movie got delayed. And... I th- they um they could have very well just done a a, a full licensed movie game mm-hmm. on the uh, the sponge on the run movie, um, but they decided not to and they went with Battle for Bikini Bottom instead, likely due to the popularity surge. So when they they took in Purple Lamp Studios because they were the most competent company to produce this game, and the one of the the, the CEO of the uh, the company. Mm-hmm has interest in speed running. So that's where the discussion came about. Like, would it be possible to get cruise boosting in this game? Because there are other remakes, well, remasters. Because, like, I believe that OOT 3D is a remaster. Yeah, correctly. I think it's on the same engine. Uh, yes, I, same, yeah. uh, something like that. But, yeah. like, there, there are glitches in that game that existed in the original that mm-hmm. they left in. This would be an unprecedented case where they'd be remaking Battle for Bikini Bottom from the ground up on a different engine. And intentionally and putting they, in... And, yeah. intentionally putting it like rep trying to replicate cruise boosting yeah. because obviously it's not going to work the same way because it's a different engine mm. the camera is different practices in game development have changed a lot over the past 17 years mm. which is crazy because it was made 17 years ago right, yeah and it's being remade but 
it would be insane if they were able to get it, get like a replicated Easter egg cruise boost in the game mm. to um to have it for the not just speedrunners, but people who are enthusiasts of the game love it too. Not just it's not just a speedrunning trick, you know. Mm. Like cruise boosting is what got me into speedrunning. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. the other, it wasn't the other way around. Mm. So that kind of a thing, it's, it's the legacy of the game where without cruise boosting even existing, I would never play the game, and none of this would ever have happened really. Mm. Nobody would have ran the game. I don't think if that if that was hadn't been found, other than the people who were originally passionate about the game itself, because I'd forgotten about it. Everybody else had forgotten about it, but you know, like the originals, Hazel and Cole and the others, um, they saw something in this game that we didn't, and they found that trick, and that got people interested in it. Mm -hmm. And then, even though cruise boosting was cool and all, it wasn't enough to get the game to the point where it is, where people respect the run and enjoy watching it. You know, mm -hmm. it was just like. They they laid a foundation for us to Find build something things. great on top of yeah yeah I gotcha and that's and that greatness is what encouraged all the the remake stuff and mm -hmm. popularity surge because of all of the unique things about the original game um like cruise boosting all of the like individual spatula strats SBA all that good stuff uh being a product of like the the older way of doing games like you talked about um do you th see rehydrated as being almost kind of a category extension like for your community or do you think that like, it's not going to be a category it's 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 an entirely different game yeah no i i, I not necessarily yeah. like actually putting it on the leaderboard is kind of but do you think that's kind of how people treat it like oh today i kind of feel like playing rehydrated or do you see like it growing its own unique speedrunning community that overlaps a little it bit it depends because mm -hmm. it's always if it doesn't have cruise boosting it's always going to be compared to the original yeah um like you can't escape that mm -hmm. even the movie game like falls victim of being compared to battle which mm -hmm. is um unfortunate but like you know it's, it's on the same engine it's it's going to be compared mm -hmm. so battle for bikini bottom is a unique experience where you can only get the stuff in that game from that game and if rehydrated is seen as a lesser version of that game it's either it's one of two things are going to happen either it's going to be popular for a month and die down or it's going to form its own community of people who don't who prefer runs that aren't as broken yeah, and fast paced. That, like people who prefer more linear, slow paced runs that still, they can still play the game that, that they love. If they love Battle for Bikini Bottom, they can play it, but they're not going to be necessarily playing it for what Battle for Bikini Bottom has become mm -hmm. through the development of the community. You know, they'd be playing a different version of Battle for Bikini Bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so with that said, the run is probably going to be a lot more linear than the uh, original. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be way less glitchy or way less fast paced rather it might it could the any percent run for instance could be shorter because we don't know how the game's gonna be made you could we could potentially even just glitch to the end of the game instantly we just don't right. know yeah but yeah. it's not going to be faster paced you're not going to be collecting you know 100 spatulas in an hour and 18 minutes you're not mm -hmm. going to be collecting 77 spatulas in an hour and 40 in an hour and excuse me 49 minute mm -hmm. 77 spatulas in 49 minutes is mm -hmm. not going to happen and uh, the in battle for king bottom rehydrated that's right. that's possible because of cruise boosting sba um, sponge glide levitation glitches being able to clip through anything mm -hmm. you know, it's, the game is the game's engine is limitless you can do whatever the fuck you want so right it's, you know, yeah it's that just makes it so much faster paced mm -hmm. if rehydrated is just um more of like big skips and not really sequence breaks mm -hmm. i can see it potentially becoming its own thing but if it's just linear battle for bikini bottom with no cruise boosting, mm -hmm. it might just be fun for a while and then maybe attract more casual speedrunners than competitive speedrunners. Mm -hmm. And you need to have that competition to keep a game alive. Yeah, I see that. But I think if it has its own take on cruise boosting as an Easter egg included in the game, I think that people will still play it because cruise boosting is uh, that unifying thing that it's not the same game, but it still has the movement that we like. Mm -hmm. So we'll just play both. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, with that in mind, you mentioned earlier that you don't always want to like talk about it as like being a streamer, but like the gig is the gig. So what what's kind of your uh, plan like to jump in there? Are you gonna like immediately start trying to like route things and figure out a way to run it yourself, or are you just gonna kind of play around with it? I'm for really, a little bit and yeah, see what I'm really do? hoping to get a review copy so I can do the routing and uh, casual play, get that out of the way on day one, so I can start speed running on actual day one. Yeah, that makes sense. Everybody else gets it. That's mm -hmm. my plan. Um, don't know what's going on with the release date, so I don't know yet if I can even get one. Mm -hmm. I want to get front page time. Um, I already talked to my representative at Twitch. They said that they'd be willing to um, get me time on the front page when the game comes out. But it's just so up in the air. I wish THQ Nordic would tell us more. 
because it's kind of affecting my career at this point. I need to be right, able to yeah. know what I'm doing all this stuff. You know, I understand that. <laughs> um, yeah. So I want to do. I don't want to jump right into it. I want to take my time and find stuff. Um, doing all this research on how the, the original game was broken is helping me f- like see strats that were done back when the game was just what Rehydrator will be, just very casual. You know, Rock like I'm writing about how people found ways to combo shiny object tiki's to mm. to pay the clam at the beginning of Jellyfish Fields. You know, stuff like that is going to be rehydrated at, at first. We don't know how it's going to develop from there, but I'm really excited to see how it goes and what we can find in the, in the game. Now, mm. I'm also taking a few notes from the Smash community, um, actually on what not to do, and what, and also what to do mm-hmm. when the game comes out as well. Um, as, as in relation um, to like moving forward. Yeah, I think that like the transition from melee to brawl is a good way of um seeing like what not to do. Yeah, that makes sense. For for um for how to manage a community because mm-hmm. a lot of it was just like fighting over which game was better and people being elitist over which game was better. The same thing with Smash 4 happened. I think Ultimate was a lot better because um the the top streamers and personalities like now Twitch was a much bigger platform than it was back when Smash 4 was first released. Mm-hmm the streamers have a lot more responsibility and power than they did before. So the biggest names are, are trying to keep the communities, you know, friendly with one another yeah, and be respectful of what they like to play. Mm. Uh, the same goes for Rehydra. That's how we're trying to, like, obviously we're going to have our opinions on which game is better, mm. but it ultimately comes down to which one you prefer. You know, like some people prefer the breakneck pace of the original. Some people prefer the, the lesser, to, to an extent, I guess, like a slower paced, more linear run yeah. of the new one. We're trying to at least make both games accessible to both players so, you know, we can capitalize on the immense amount of growth that we're going to get from Rehydrated. Mm-hmm. Similar to how, like, because Ultimate got so big, Melee got bigger as well. So even if they don't like playing the game, they can at least be respectful toward it to keep it accessible for both communities. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's very similar to that. But what we're not going to do is, um, like the old days of Smash when they they got their you know remake or sequel mm-hmm. and they just kind of um choose your side or lead us about it. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to do that here. Yeah, I got you. You can learn from other communities and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. one of my biggest inspirations for getting into this game was um the Smash community actually. Mm-hmm. Um, because of the way they're passionate about their game. I wanted to see what would happen if somebody applied a similar amount of passion to something that had potential but just wasn't recognized yet yeah definitely. So, and that that kind of led to all this that happened here so i think um just taking thinking critically about stuff that other people have done and applying that to your own leadership is a good way of um running a community yeah i think um another like speed running equivalent i guess would be kind of the wind waker how it's like the two different versions of that game have managed to like break in their own unique ways and yeah. have a uh, unique communities that's cool and i think like you're in a good place because at the end of the day it's just like if it's just a linear game, then the original one still exists, and you can just hop right back over to it. But yeah, I'm I'm hoping it brings. But I would love for both to um to be popular. Yeah, definitely. I can see that gain their own their own followings. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I hope it brings. It'd be hard trying to manage both communities at the same time because I know I'm going to be at the forefront of both. But mm. figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you have like what like f- basically three or four full time jobs right now that are all battle for bikini bottom. So. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we'll just pop it up to five. That's not a big deal. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciated your insights on all of that. Um, you guys can find Shift on twitch.tv slash Shift. Um, and what exactly is like the – is your YouTube channel just Shift if they want to go look at the, the – Yeah, the URL there? is like slash Shift SS. Um, all I have to plug really is go check out the tutorial video. Mm-hmm. Um, it's over three hours long, but if you got something you need to – like you're just trying to watch something during all the um, – the uh, the coronavirus outbreak right. and you're all in your house anyway just hanging out um i try to keep it entertaining i try to you know speak in a way that's soothing for people to listen to if they're not necessarily interested in learning the run but if you're interested in like trying tricks or just you want to hear how the game works at a more basic level mm-hmm. uh, if you have any interest in that kind of stuff or like even just like the memes that are put that are scattered throughout to keep people entertained you know that kind of stuff um it's all in there. You take a look at that video. I sp- spent a lot of time on it. So great. Um, 
I would like for, you know, as many people to be able to see and use it to, to get into the community as possible. We're, we're open to helping anybody who in this game. Good deal. Sweet. Well, I look forward to watching it myself. I uh, just got back from a trip, but it's going to be the first thing I watch now that life cool. is paused. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Once again, I'm Ghostwood. This was Shift, and that's time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Time Safe Podcast. I'm Jacob Ghostwood Wilkinson. I'm just going to go ahead and do my show notes real quick. If you are listening to the show on Podcatchers and you'd be interested in watching it in video form, it is available on YouTube, uh, bit.ly slash timesaveyt. Again, that's bit.ly slash timesaveyt, all lowercase. I post a video version of the show to that feed. You can see my face cam as well as the face cam of my guest and watch us have the conversation. It's really interesting. If you're already watching it as a video and you'd be interested in listening to it in audio form, then check us out on all your podcatchers. It, just type in the Time Safe Podcast with Ghostwood. Those are each individual words, the Time Safe Podcast with Ghostwood. Um, you can find it on Google Play Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, CastBox, Stitcher, all that good stuff. Um, it's a really convenient way to listen to the show. If you are watching the show and you like the overlay, it was made for me by GG Metro, Austin Lane. Um, he pulled it all together. It looks very nice. Thank you, Austin. If you're interested in following the show on Twitter, you can set, uh, follow us at Time Save Show. Again, that's at Time Save Show. I tweet new links to episodes. I also eventually will start asking for questions for the guests there. So it's a really good way to keep up with the show. If you're interested in joining the show's community, I'm putting together a Discord for it. It's still a little bit work in progress as of today when this episode drops March 26th. So... Go ahead and jump in bit.ly slash TSP discord. Again, that's bit.ly slash TSP discord, all lowercase. Um, eventually I'll have a bunch of channels in there for discussion about the show, uh, but it might be on hold when you first join, but please go ahead and get in there and uh, we'll get it going as soon as possible. Uh, the intro for the show, as well as audio editing and production help is provided by Declan McCrory. Thank you so much, Declan, for all the help you do. I really appreciate it. And the next episode of the show is due on... Uh, april 9th but it might be april 2nd in fact i'm hoping it'll be april 2nd uh one because i'm behind and two i don't have anything else to do right now so i'm probably going to be switching to weekly for a while assuming i'm able to find guests weekly so uh april 2nd hopefully fingers crossed if you're in the discord and you follow me on twitter i'll give an update about that so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye